We are in the midst of racing's horrifying perfect storm. The most brilliant jockey and the most brilliant stables embroiled in drugs. And no one knows where the recreational drugs for riders and performance enhancing drugs for horses begin or end. The rumours are rife, the facts are thin. But from the ashes of the sport's reputation comes the man, Frankie de Torre. Upon his shoulders rides the integrity of humans in this most animal of sports. His fall was absolute. His resurrection still uncertain. Four days before he races again, he's been speaking to our own Claire Balding about how he and the sport he loves have been brought so low. Claire, am I doing it right? I think so. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm only joking. Back to basics, I was thinking. Do you feel that you have to... As you know, uh, most of my life I've been spoiled. They usually tuck it up for me. But I've had plenty of uh, practice this winter. Britain's best-known jockey, with a personality that transcends sport, has had a lot of time on his hands of late. Dettori improving on the green colours. Dettori state with destiny. Frankie Dettori may have won every major classic. And it's seven for Frankie! And created history with a magnificent seven winners at Ascot in one day. But since December, he hasn't competed in the sport he's come to represent, having tested positive in France for a banned substance. What did you take? I filled a test for cocaine, and uh, obviously it's been uh, very well documented by the press, uh, something that uh, I'm very ashamed and embarrassed and uh, paid a big price for it. You know, I spent six months not doing the thing that I love, racing. He's back in the saddle, riding early morning work for trainer Ed Dunlop, preparing to return to competitive racing next week. In his absence, an even greater scandal has hit the sport. Mahmoud al Zaruni, one of the head trainers at the biggest stable in racing, Godolphin, has been found guilty of giving anabolic steroids to his horses. It's early morning in Newmarket, and I've come here to talk to the most famous jockey in Europe. I want to find out what happened, how he feels about his imminent return, and get his view on the scandal that has engulfed the yard he used to ride for, Sheikh Mohammed's Godolphin team. Right now, it's Frankie's own mistake he has to acknowledge if his public image is to be fully restored. Was this a one-off mistake, or was his drug usage sustained throughout his career? How do you get in a situation where cocaine is available and you're in a position where you're going to take it? Like, uh, for any other human being who has done it before, uh, basically, you're up to be in a situation with uh, some people and, the, and then you can't, you know, you can't say no because, you, f you know, you feel low and perhaps you want to escape the, the reality of life and uh, things were going bad, I was depressed and I guess uh, a moment of weakness and I fell for it and uh, I can only got myself to blame I can't blame anybody else with the French test can they detect something then that's in your system longer ago yes, is that absolutely what it is? Yeah. you don't think that anyone tipped them off I, I, if they did I don't know but uh, I if you ask my honest opinion no I think it was one of those uh, sods law that I did the wrong thing at the wrong time and I got tested. And, and just to confirm, you are certain that is that was a one-off, that is the one and only time you've taken cocaine? Oh, yeah, but don't forget, it's not just in this country we get tested. We get tested everywhere we go. So, you know, uh, you know if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. Even if it is just one moment of madness, the repercussions are the same. As a household name, Frankie's fall from grace shook not just the foundations of racing, but shattered the image of one of our best known and most exuberant personalities. But the public wasn't the only audience Frankie had to face. At home, there was his wife and five children, and in Italy, his parents. Your father was a champion jockey in Italy. Mm. He, was, he was very well respected road for a long time. How tough was it to call him and say, Dad, I've failed a drugs test? I'll be honest with you, he was the first person that I called because I thought, well, if I can get the artist's job out of the way telling him. Dad was an old-fashioned person. And, uh, you know, he thinks failing a drug test, then you're actually an addict, you know, and you think, you know, you should go to the priory and 
clean yourself up. He says, Dad, listen, it was a one-off, you know, I was a bit low and I made a mistake. And, you know, but try to explain that to your parents is, is, is a different ballgame. What did Catherine say when you told her? Uh, I mean, she was devastated because, uh, you know, she's my wife and she's part of me and the next step is to t tell the children what well, it was difficult. Luckily, but well, I'm not say luckily, most of our children are quite uh, young, so uh, I, don't, I don't think many took it on board, but, uh, uh, you know, it's more embarrassing for, for myself than for them, really, because, uh, uh, you know, I, I let them down, really. And, and then, obviously, you know, the whole hell let loose, and I, we had people camping outside my house for a week, and I managed to smuggle my way into the house by uh, hiding underneath the car, underneath the car seat. My face was splashed all over the, the TV and, and I was the main news of the day. And then the second news was Obama was re-elected for second term. It was a war in Syria and it was uh, two and a half million people with no water in New York. And I was the main news, then I failed the drug test, and I thought, my God. So why had Britain's most successful jockey so fatally catapulted himself onto the front pages? It had been going so well. Since 1994, he'd been number one rider to Godolphin, winning over 2,000 races. He was always more than just a jockey to Sheikh Mohammed. He was like a son. But when Mahmoud al Zaruni was promoted to a trainer's position in 2010, he had his own ideas. Dittori fell out of favour and no longer had the pick of the rides. Obviously, you know, we, 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 we took it about my failing the drug test, but also it was the time that I left Godolphin. My first 17 years of my riding career at Godolphin, I was always the number one pick. All of a sudden, I saw myself being the fourth in the biggest race in the world. And it started from there. And, it was never an explanation why and what. You know, it just, I had to kind of accept it for, known, for unknown reasons. And you start getting depressed. I wasn't sleeping at night. I was arguing with my wife. But then you think, oh, maybe I'll be all right next week. Maybe I'll be back in favor. And then, you know, things kept on going worse. And my head was wrecked, absolutely wrecked. And I couldn't take it anymore. And then when I got off for the ride on Camelot, I was like, winning the lottery, you know, because I felt wanted again. And, you know, it was like, for me, it was a way out of the job. Frankie accepted the ride in the Arc de Triomphe on Camelot, a horse from the stables of Godolphin's fiercest rival. He knew in doing so, he'd force the issue with Sheikh Mohammed, who would see riding for the opposition as a betrayal. I didn't want to leave, trust me, I didn't know what to leave. I was the happiest person in the world. But they, in a way, they, 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 they forced my hand to leave. I think one, another six months there, then I would have definitely end up in a priory, you know? I was, you know, I was like, done in, done in. The break was sudden and complete. Frankie says he tried to seek a personal reconciliation with Sheikh Mohammed, without success. I stopped in Dubai because I wanted to basically shake hand to Sheikh Mohammed, my patron for 18 years, and say thank you for all the good things that he did to me, but for some reason or another, he was too busy and... Uh... So he refused to see you? Well, I, don't th I think he was... Uh, I'm not sure if he refused or not, or maybe he was too busy. What do you think of what has happened at Godolphin over the last month or so? All the hard work, not just me, the whole stable done, has been ruined by, by you know, by, by one person, you know. Uh, but it's ruined my career to start, and now it's ruined Godolphin. When I say ruined, it's just given a very, very, very bad reputation. You know, what, what is intriguing is like, when you train 300 horses, why, why do you need to do that? Did you ever see any improvement in, in his horses that you thought was suspicious or surprising? The thing is, I really don't know anything about the announced performing drugs in horse racing. I mean, I'm, 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 the, I'm the guy on top and it's, you, know, you can't look through these tests. It's very hard to really tell if the horse you know, is full of steroids or not. I can't really tell. Do you think that there is a wider drugs problem in racing? Are 
lots of jo jockeys taking drugs and m m it's maybe it's, not showing? It's very hard for me to say, but you know, I can guarantee you we get, we get tested like, like the cyclist. I mean, random tests all the time. So, you know, I look at my example, I got caught. So uh, I don't think so, no. I mean, it's part of the protocol. You have to go through so many tests, you know, to get your, but, but you know, I never had a problem with that. But it's amazing that, uh, you know, I feel like Lance Armstrong, <laughs> they come and knock on my door any time of the day and... How nervous are you about coming back? Mm, I'd be lying to say that I'm not, because I'm nervous. You know, I've been away for so long, I don't know what to expect, what do people expect from me or what, I expect from the people, so I'm, I'm nervous that kind of way. I don't know really what, what it's going to be like. On Monday evening, at a minor meeting at Leicester, he'll be back. This time without the support of a major stable. He's certainly less bullish than the Frankie of old and is starting again from scratch. Riding winners will be his first challenge, rehabilitating his image, his second. Frankie comes back into racing at a really crucial point. Because with what's happened at Marmida Zaruni's yard and horses testing positive for anabolic steroids, this is a pretty crucial period for the reputation of flat racing. And Frankie has for so long been the public energetic face. He's been its vitality. He's been its joy in many ways. And I think racing will be very grateful to have him back. But what racing needs is for him to be riding big race winners. They need Frankie's face on the front page this time for all the right reasons. I was in a bad way. And, um, but like I said, um, you know, as soon as I get my first winner in, then I'll be away. And will you be doing, you know, flying dismounts? I haven't done one for a while, so hopefully I've still got it. <laughs>